I remember when White Noise first came out, I was so, so excited for it. Mostly because this was like the first time in a long time that Michael Keaton was taking on a lead role. Like, probably after the Batman movies, he kind of went in this sort of, I don't know, like a self-imposed exile or something like that, where he wasn't really doing too much movies like he'd show up here and there do like a little movie here or a tv movie there show up in herbie fully loaded with Lindsay lohan for some reason who knows but this was like his sort of quote-unquote big comeback um and i was there day one man uh, i wanted to see michael keaton on the big screen again so i was very excited for that and you know i don't know if he realizes how, just how beloved he really is because i mean to me at least he's like Tom Hanks levels of of greatness of, of just uh, an actor who you'll see you watch in anything and, and just uh, love him and, and that's how I feel about Michael Keaton um, Eddie Redmayne can go fuck himself that Oscar was Michael Keaton's but I I digress uh, White Noise this is a movie about uh, paranormal happenings uh, through EVP uh, we hear these voices come through like uh, static interference and things like that and it's uh, supposed to be it's it's theorized to be uh the spiritual world contacting with our world basically and why exactly they're trying to do that are they trying to prevent bad things from happening in in the world or maybe they're just causing trouble who knows um but it's kind of an interesting and it is kind of like a real belief that uh uh, the the dead can contact with the living through this so basically michael keaton he's uh he, he's an architect um, and his wife is a famous writer, and she is killed. And, of course, in the beginning scenes, um, they're, like, as happy as happy can be, as they usually are in these types of movies. Um, if, it, if it's like a family that has to go through the horror of some paranormal activity from beginning to end, usually they're pretty unhappy, but if one of them has to die for the plot to work, they both have to be so exceedingly happy in the beginning, of, and that's kind of how it is here, and, you know, Michael Keaton, he's uh, in love with his wife, he has a kid, and uh, uh, he, he knows how to fill in a turtleneck and, and things like that, but then uh, she, she dies sort of mysteriously, she's thought to be missing at first, um, but then we find that her uh, car crashed, and uh, she uh, got her head smashed in, in the rocks on the shore, and that's how she died, or did she? Um, so it's all kind of like about that, and about how this uh, investigator, who, uh, what's the actor's name? He, he's really good in it. He's uh, uh, Ian, Ian McNeese is the actor. He's like a... Uh, an, an obsessive of, of this uh, EVP kind of subculture where he's like collecting tapes and tapes and tapes and files and files and files of, of these uh, spiritual correspondences and he's very good he's like oh I have to tell you your wife is trying to contact you blah 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 so then he kind of passes down the obsession to the Michael Keaton character who starts to believe that his wife is telling him things um, about what's happening uh, right here right now in, in the living world and things that he can possibly prevent and uh, bad things he can stop from happening but there are also bad people in the spiritual world that are kind of out to get him sort of uh so creepy things start happening and things like that and that's basically the plot of the movie uh, it's not bad it's not great um uh, michael keaton he's great uh of course um the the plot itself i mean it is interesting like it is uh, again it's a real belief but i don't know too much about it but like you always kind of like you know, if you're, like, say, talking on the phone, and then you, like, hear static, and you can kind of sort of hear something, but it's probably just, like, interference on a cell phone, but you're like, is that, like, a ghost trying to talk to me? So it kind of plays up on that kind of fear, which I think it does nicely. And, and I think that the fact that this movie deals with ghosts and paranormal in the afterlife, the fact that there's something positive about that, that uh, these other beings are trying to do something positive as opposed to just scare the shit out of people, I, I think is something a little bit different, because in every ghost movie, of course, the ghosts just want to scare us, and, and that's it, basically. Uh, the ghosts are always evil, so we don't see too many good-natured ghosts trying to do good deeds, basically. So I like that. Uh, probably the biggest pitfall is in the ending, where it, it is this movie about paranormal happenings, but then they try to bring kind of like a 
a, a real life kind of twist to it. And I don't want to give away too much uh, because I, I would recommend seeing the movie ultimately, but they try to like bring everything together in a certain way and then like do a flashback to this one character and you're supposed to go like, ah, yes, that's how it all, all came together. But meanwhile, it's like the stupidest thing. You're like, I don't remember that guy, but it, it kind of fails in, in that respect, which I mean, for all that it's worth, it's a tiny, tiny, uh, kind of footnote on, on an otherwise uh, interesting movie that plays out very uh, entertainingly and uh, I think Keaton does a good job and uh, I think it's worth seeing. I think it does have its good creepy moments and I think it does deal with interesting subject matter and uh, something just a little bit different which I like. So it's not always just ghosts trying to creep people out. It's, it's about ghosts with uh, you know, the patented unfinished business and, and purposes and trying to do something good, but also the ones that are trying to do something bad. And that's always something to be cautious of. So that's my review of no White Noise. Uh, see it for Michael Keaton. Uh, come for Michael Keaton. Stay for the ghost stuff. Not bad. Um, Michael Keaton's the best. Uh, that's it. I love Michael Keaton. I just wanted to say that. Uh, so that's it. I uh, hope you enjoy my review. Comment, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. Visit Derek237.com. I have plenty more horror reviews coming up this month, October 2015. 31 Days of Horror. So stay tuned for all that. Until then, stay scared, and I'll see you next time.